Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another session of our online organic chemistry review. For today's session, we are going to use questions from Chapter 2 of our. But before we start the session, let me go ahead and acknowledge those of you who are already here. I noticed we have a lot of you already joined us. I see Aja Walton, Alfreda Woods, Ariel Wally, Brianna Neal, Farrell Tiffany, Ines Kifando, Jamil Jemison, Jenny Jones, Jasmine Lyons, Kira Bradley, Makimba Saki, Oyin Olusha, Pravin Sheka, Sandra Oyekere, Taylor Wright, Thomas Weaver, and to the Wilson. Okay, I see here Taylor Wright is also here. Okay, I do want to welcome all of you. I see also Demi Oshun Deko is joining us. If you can hear my voice, give me a happy face. If you can hear my voice, give me a happy face. Okay, great. Oh, great. Everybody can hear me. Okay, excellent. So we can get the session started. Hopefully, we will be here for no more than one hour. Uh, to get the session started, Ariel, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Convert the model below to a skeletal drawing. Okay, very good, and thank you. Now, what they wanted to do here is to convert this model here to a skeletal drawing. In other words, draw the skeletal structure for this molecule. That is what they want us to do. Now, to do that, what they are also testing, they are testing your knowledge of, uh, of the octet rule and valence. Okay, so before you can draw the skeletal structure, you want to be sure that you have the complete structure. And to do that, <coughs> if you take a look at this molecule here, I will see that the most, a lot of the atoms are not uh, are obeying the octet rule or the valence. So we do need to place some carbon-carbon uh, uh, double bond or carbon-nitrogen double bond in some of these uh, uh, bonds right here. Of course, the blue atoms here is nitrogen, the gray is carbon, the white is hydrogen. Now, if you look at this here, take a look at this carbon here. Does this carbon obey the uh, octet rule or the valence rule? Yes or no? If it, if it is, say yes. If it is not, say no. This carbon right here. No. Excellent. Okay, good. How about this carbon here? The answer is also no. How about this nitrogen? Does he obey the, okay, the answer is also no. So now what I want to do here, uh, before we do this, ordinarily what they want us to do is to actually do this on this, uh, on this uh, drawing, uh, a platform right here. So, but before we can start drawing the structure, I, I want to take you to my notebook so we could write the structure down on paper and then come back to here to actually draw the skeletal structure. So, give me one second here to go to my notebook. Okay, this is my note, notebook right here, and this is the structure that we have. So I'm going to do the two-dimensional structure here in which we have, if you look at this, we have a six-member ring attached to a five-member ring, okay? So I will have and then you have the five-member ring Okay, now here you have nitrogen here. 
you have hydrogen here, you have nitrogen here, you have another nitrogen here, and hydrogen here, and here is nitrogen, and then to this carbon here, you have nitrogen is attached to this carbon, and to that nitrogen, you have two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so for, let us work on this together now. If you take a look at this carbon here, the way they have, they have given us the structure, okay, this carbon here needs a valence of four. Right, right now, how many valence does this carbon have? Take a look at this carbon. How many does it have? Does it have three exactly? How about this carbon here? How many does it have? This carbon, yeah, three exactly. So therefore, we need to place a carbon-carbon double bond between those two carbon. Okay, so we have a carbon-carbon double bond right there. Okay, now let us now go to this nitrogen. This nitrogen here, uh, what is the valence of nitrogen? What is the valence of nitrogen? Three. Okay, what, how many valence is nit nitrogen showing in this structure, the way it is written? How many? Two. Okay, so we need one more bond. How about this carbon? Okay, this carbon also needs one more bond, right? So we need to place a double bond here between this carbon and this nitrogen. Now, how about this nitrogen here? So we do the same thing with this nitrogen. This nitrogen also needs a valence of three. Right now, it only has a valence of two. The same thing happened to this carbon here. It needs a valence of four. Right now, it only shows a valence of three. So for the most part, this question is testing your knowledge of valence and also the octet rule. Okay, so we've taken care of this part of the molecule. How about this nitrogen here and this carbon? What do we need to do between this carbon and this nitrogen? Do we need to place a double bond here, yes or no? Okay, somebody's asking me a question. Let me see here. Uh, Somebody is typing a question. Let me see what the question is. Uh, somebody said, uh, okay, yeah, that's Nadira. Say, on the first carbon structure, shouldn't it be another hydrogen attached to the nitrogen? Let me see here. Where, where, where? On the first carbon. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was Nigeria. Thank you for the uh, observation right here. So this carbon here, this nitrogen here has, okay, because, and that is this one here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now, therefore, you guys say we need to place a, a nitrogen carbon double bond here. So that is right here, right? So we have this right here. Okay. Okay, right now, so as far as we are concerned, the valence of all of these atoms has been satisfied, right? Now, let us now take a look at the, let us take a look at the uh, octet. With respect to the octet rule, uh, does this, the way this is written, does this nitrogen satisfy the octet rule? Yes or no? No. Okay, so what do we need to do, therefore? Do we need a pair of non-bonding electrons, or do we need two pairs? One or two? One. Okay, so we place a pair of non-bonding electrons here. How about this nitrogen here? Do we do the same thing, or is that okay? Is that nitrogen happy? One also. Good. Okay. So we do the same thing here. If you look at this nitrogen, this nitrogen only has six electrons surrounding the nitrogen, so we need to place another pair of non-burning electrons here. 
How about this nitrogen? Do we do the same thing? Yes or no? Yes. And then we come to this nitrogen also, so we do the same thing. So at this point, this is the complete structure. Even though they gave us this model here, what we've done here is to draw the complete structure. Okay? So now, let us go back to our because I want to show you how to now write this structure, write the skeletal structure, which is what they want us to do uh, using the OWL uh, 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 software uh, system. Okay, so give me one second. I'm going to go back to OWL. Okay, so this is where we are here. We now know what the structure is. So I'm going to see, keep in mind we have a six member ring and then attached to a five member ring. So what I will do, I will pick up a six member ring right here and place that right here. Then I will pick up the five member ring right here and join these together right here. So now what I've done now, I have joined the five member ring to a six member ring. Okay, so let us see what it looks like. Okay, good. Okay, so now what do I need to do? And I need to draw the rest of the molecule. Okay, let us see. I will take nitrogen. According to what the we have here, I will take nitrogen here. Okay. Uh, nitrogen is here. Okay. Now notice that how is right away recognizing the valence of nitrogen. So it is playing hydrogen here. Okay. Okay. Somebody has a question. Go ahead. Ask your question. Uh, who is that? Somebody. Okay. Imani, go ahead and ask your question. Pick up the mic and ask your question. Okay, so man, or you could type the question to me through the chat window. Okay. Okay, and so when uh, Imani wants to uh, type the question, then we will be looking for that question. Yes, go ahead. That's uh, Aja wants to ask a question. Okay, no response. Okay. So now, notice that uh, the uh, owl recognizes that nitrogen needs a, a valence of three. So that is why it is placed in hydrogen right here even though we don't have hydrogen in there. Don't worry, we will come back to deal with that, okay? Then on this here, this nitrogen here, so we're going to place that also here, okay? Also see that uh, owl is recognizing the, the trivalency of nitrogen, so that is why it is placing an hydrogen here. So now we then come to this nitrogen. We place nitrogen here. Okay, that is attached to hydrogen, which is fine, which is this one here. Then we have this nitrogen here. There's nitrogen there. Okay, and that is this nitrogen here. Okay. Now, on this carbon here, we have nitrogen attached to that carbon. So we have, so let us simply draw a bond. Okay. So now, notice how the owl is recognizing the valence of nitrogen right here. I place a nitrogen bond, nitrogen carbon bond, then immediately I uh, place these two hydrogen atoms here. So now let us now begin to now place the double bond, right? Remember we had a double bond, so I will take my bond. This is your bond right here. I place the double bond here. Remember that's what we did. And then I will place, okay, I will place another double bond here, right? Okay, and okay, and then here, between here and here, uh, notice how I am placing the double bond, place another double bond here, and here I place between this nitrogen and this, place another double bond. You notice what Owl is doing. The moment I place the double bond, it removes the hydrogen. Okay, we also notice here, on this carbon here, there is hydrogen, so I'm going to place the hydrogen there. Okay. 
Now, what is left here? Uh, what is left? Okay, there is also an hydrogen right here. There's an hydrogen right here. Now, keep in mind, what they want us to draw, to, to draw is the skeletal structure. We have the all. We have everything that we need in this molecule. The only thing that is wrong here is that. Can anybody tell me what is wrong with this skeletal structure, the way I, I draw it? Can anybody tell me? Nitrogen needs lone pairs. Okay. Uh, no, for skeletal structure, nitrogen does not need lone pair yet. You know that is that no nitrogen does not need lone pair. There's something else that I'm exactly somebody got it right. He said we don't need to show the hydrogens attached to carbon. Exactly. That is correct. Whenever you are drawing the skeletal structure, you don't need to show the hydrogen that is attached to carbon. So what do I do? I pick up my razor. This is the razor right here. I remove the hydrogen. I do the same thing here, remove the hydrogen. So now I have my complete skeletal structure. Keep in mind we now have everything in place. We have these two hydrogen attached to nitrogen. Keep in mind in the skeletal structure you can you you are allowed to show the hydrogen that is attached to the hetero atom. By hetero atom we mean we mean like nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and all those atoms that are not carbon atoms. Okay, so here also we have the hydrogen, the hydrogen is attached to nitrogen here, which is this. Okay, did, if you guys follow what we just did now, give me a happy face. If you follow what we did, give me a happy face. Somebody asked a question. Is it just hydrogen that we do not? Yes. Somebody asked, is it only hydrogen that we do not show? Yes. We do not show hydrogen that is attached to carbon in a skeletal structure. But if the hydrogen is attached to an hetero atom, you have to show it, which is what we have here. Okay? Okay, so everybody is happy with what we've done so far. I see a lot of people have since joined us. Uh, I will acknowledge all of you at the end of this session. Okay, now, so we finish this question here. Now the next question they want us to do, let us go down. Oh, by the way, before we go to that question, uh, since you, I, I want to show you guys uh, basically how to use the owl. So everybody agree with this, so I'm going to take my eraser, erase. Okay, I just want to show you how to use uh, the owl drawing <coughs> uh, system. Okay, uh, I've showed you earlier the... Uh, you have all of the, uh, the cyclic uh, fragments here. You have all of the cyclic fragments. For example, if I want to place the benzene here, I could simply just do that. Okay. Uh, if I want to then uh, draw, let's say for example, I want to add a metal group to that, I could simply take a bond and then do this. Okay. So that will attach a bond to that carbon. Now, if I want to, uh, for example, say I want to draw, uh, let me see here. I could do this. I could do this. Do a skeletal structure. Skeletal structure. Now, supposing I want to replace the carbon here with oxygen, I simply do that. Okay. So anyway, uh, you have all of your atoms here. Some of your uh, Atoms that you generally uh, need, they are all here. And of course, your, your bond is here, your basic bond is here, and all of your ring system is here. So you could pick up any of the ring system. I take this. I want to attach uh, two ring systems together. I simply do this. Okay. So anyway, this is how you use the, how, uh, the drawing uh, uh, system. Okay. So I'm going to now go back and erase. Take your eraser. 
So by the time you guys begin to use this, you you will find that it's actually a fun uh, uh, system to use. Okay, so let us go to the next question. Okay, I think okay, I I believe we've already answered this question. Let me see here. Uh, Kiera, go ahead and read this question for us. All on my computer, okay, but I think Kiera. it says which atoms have at least one unshared pair of electrons? Great, that is correct. That is correct. Thank you. So what it says is, which atoms have at least one lone unshared pair of electrons? Okay, I think we've already done that. Uh, if you look at this here, all it wants you to do at this point is simply to type in, okay, those atoms that have lone pairs of electrons. Okay, based on these numbers here, okay, this nitrogen is 9, this one is 7, this one is 11, this one is 5, this one is 3. Okay, so which atoms here have lone pairs of non-bonding electrons? Can you just give me the numbers? Ah, uh, we have, okay, yes, great, we have 3, 5, Seven, nine, and eleven. That, and that is what they want you to do because we did that already in the in the last problem. So I think the uh, the last problem that we did, we actually answered both of the questions at the same time. Okay. So this is another case of simply just recognizing the uh, knowing your octet rule and your valence rule. Okay. So that is good. So far, so good. So now what I want to do before you guys came in. I already copied most all of the questions in my notebook, so we're going to go straight to my notebook, and I will pull those questions out so we can actually work them together. Okay, so let us go to the next one. Okay, this question here, Brianna, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Specify the formal charges, both sign and magnitude, on the atoms labeled A through C. Okay, thank you. Oh, by the way, you guys notice that I'm calling on some of your uh, fellow students. Uh, the reason I'm calling on them, they came in early, and then I talked to them earlier, and I know that their mics are working, so that is why I'm actually calling on them. So if your mic is working and uh, you do want me to call on you, uh, please let me know through the chat window. Okay, okay so this question says, Specify the formal charges, <laughs> both sign and magnitude, on the atoms that are labeled. Okay, so let us do this. A. Does anybody know what the formal charge on atom A will be? Minus one. Exactly. Great. Uh, that's my kingdom. Minus one. Everybody got that right. Great. So minus one, because uh, for oxygen you have a uh, the valence. The electron for oxygen is 6, oh, it's and oxygen, the way it is written here, has 7 valence electrons, so 6 minus 7, that is minus 1. That is why this has a negative a, a minus 1 uh, formal charge on oxygen. How about B? How about nitrogen, this nitrogen. Oh, somebody has their mic on. Can you turn your mic off? I am hearing your conversation with one of your friends. Uh, okay, plus one, exactly. So we do the same thing, plus one. So this is plus one. Nitrogen is plus one because the valence electron for nitrogen is five, and right now nitrogen only has four valence electrons surrounding it, so that is five minus 4, so it becomes plus 1. So that is why we place a positive charge on nitrogen. Okay, how about this uh, carbon here? 
What is the formal charge? On? Okay, great, great. Everybody says zero. So you guys got that right. Okay, so we don't need to do any more on this. Okay, let us go to this one here. Uh, about C, this C here, formal charge. C here, minus one with this. For the same reason as we did this one here, about this nitrogen. Nitrogen, plus one, great. Oh, you guys can actually teach me today. Uh, okay, good. About this uh, carbon here. Zero. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we've done that. So we are moving right along. We might be able to get out of here before uh, 9 o'clock today. Okay, we we'll go to the next one. Okay, let me see here. Sandra, can you go ahead and read this for us? Identify the reacting acid and base each of the following reactions by letters. Okay, great. And um, thank you. Okay, it says identify the reactant acid and base in each of the following reactions. Okay, so what they want us to do here, you have acid base reaction. You have acid base reaction and they want you to identify which is the acid and which is the base. Okay. Now keep in mind we have two types of acid that we generally deal with in organic chemistry. We have we have what we call the bronze test acid and base. Okay, can anybody tell me what the bronsted acid is? Okay, somebody asked a question. Quick question. Let me uh, let me see. Donate. Oh, okay, bronsted acid donates a proton. Great, that is the answer to that. But let me go. Somebody is asking me a question through the chat window. Let me see what that question is. Quick question of formal charge. Can we calculate the formal charge also by using the equation group of the atom? Number of bonds, group of the atom minus number of bonds, non bonding elect, elect, electrons. Okay, yeah, well, yes, that's what we did. That's what we did. Uh, we used the, uh, the, the group is the valence electron. The group gives you the valence electron. And then we look at the number of electrons, the valence electrons that actually surround the atom in the uh, given molecule. I, I believe that is what we did. So anyway, so that is in response to the question by one of uh, your colleagues, uh, which is in the chat window. Is there any other question here? Let's see. OK. OK, so you say that the bronsted acid uh, donates a proton. Uh, about the bronsted base, what does the bronsted base do? Bronsted base, what does it do? Accept a proton, exactly. So, therefore, in this question here, which is your acid and which is your base? Can you tell me whether A or B, which is the acid here? The acid, which is the acid? Keep it. Yes, A is the acid. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. B is the acid. Because if you look at what is happening here, this water here is donating a proton to this here to form this. You see? So in this case, what we have here, the water is acting as an acid because it is donating a proton to this negatively charged carbon right here, and that becomes a CH3. You see? From a CH2 you got a CH3. And in the process, the water is losing a proton, it becomes an hydroxide. So in this case, water is the acid. So that means that here, therefore, that means that the base will be, this is the base. So we say this is acid. 
and this is the base. Okay, so this this is a classic blunted acid base reaction. Okay. The A is the base and the B is the acid. Okay, now this other question here, they also want us to determine which one of these is the acid or base. Okay, to answer that question, let me give you a little bit of background information. Uh, even though I know uh, some of you already know that answer. Remember I told you we have two types of acid that we deal with in organic chemistry. The first type, we say it is the blunted acid and blunted base uh, type acid and bases. The other type is what we call Lewis acid or base. Now, for a Lewis acid, does anybody know the definition of a Lewis acid? Does anybody know the accept a pair of electrons? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so therefore, what is a Lewis base? So a Lewis acid accepts electron. The Lewis acid accepts electron. So what is a Lewis base? What does it do? Donates electron. Excellent. So therefore, the Lewis base donates electron. Do not forget that because we are going to be doing a lot of this as we move as, as we move forward in our study of organic chemistry. Okay. So therefore, if you look at this reaction here, if you look at this reaction here, what they did not show you, they did not show you the non-bonding pair of electron on oxygen. It should be right here because in order for that oxygen to have the, an octet of electrons, it needs eight electrons. Right now, it's only showing four, so we need to place two non-bonding pairs of electrons on oxygen. Okay, so therefore, in this particular instance, what type of acid-base reaction is this reaction? What type of acid-base reaction is this? Anybody has an idea? Lewis acid base reaction, exactly. Lewis acid base reaction. In this case, which species is accepting electron? Is it A or B? Which of these two species here, uh, B, B is accepting electron. So according to that, we say whenever a species accepts electron, we say it is a Lewis acid. So therefore, this is your acid. Based on this equation here. And so by necessity, therefore, this here must be your base. This here must be your base. So this is your base. And that is your Lewis base, and this is your Lewis acid, okay? As, okay, somebody is asking, how can you tell B accepted the electron? Okay, excellent question. How can we tell that B accepted the electron? Let us do, that's an excellent question. Let us look at it, let us look at the product, okay? Actually, this year, these people are very, uh, sloppy in the way they're writing this. It, that should be right here. That should be another pair of non-bonding electrons here. Okay. <coughs> in order for this oxygen to have an octet of electron, you have another non-bonding pair of electron right here. Look at what happens here. Look at this oxygen here. This oxygen started off with two pairs of non-bonding electrons. And then look at the product. In the product now, what is it doing? It is now sharing that pair of non-bonding electron, at least one of the pair of non-bonding electron 
with uh, titanium tetrachloride, which is what this is. Titanium tetrachloride. Okay, so so in other words, this here, this molecule here, the oxygen in this molecule is donating electron to this titanium tetrachloride. And that is what we say that whenever something donates electron, it is a base. And because this is the titanium tetrachloride is accepting the electron, if you look at this, because now this titanium is negatively charged now, it accepted electron, now it is now, that is why we call this the Lewis acid. Is that clear? Okay, very good. Okay, so let us move on. Now, if what we just did now, if it is clear to all of you, give me a happy face. Okay, I see a bunch of happy faces. Okay, good. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, good. Okay, I see Jackson is joining us. Jackson, you are welcome. Okay, now let us go to the next one. Okay, let us see here. Uh, Jasmine Lyons, can you read this question for us? Okay, if Jasmine is not ready, about uh, 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 Inish Kifando, uh, is your mic working? If your mic is working, can you read this question for us? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Well, that contributes to the same average. Okay, I see you. So, I see you are having yes, problems. Yes, the following mind. pairs of structures okay, but, uh, represent Brown, resonance forms that contribute. Okay, good, and thank you. So it says, uh, do the following pairs of structures represent resonance forms that contribute to the same hybrid? Okay, let us look at A. In other words. The question they are asking you here. Somebody wants to talk? Okay. Well, the question they are asking here is, are these two structures, do they represent resonance structures? Can you give me a yes and no answer? Do these two structures represent resonance structures? No. Excellent. Great. The answer is no. Does anybody know why the answer is no? That is correct. Does anybody know why? SP3 carbon, exactly. Because this carbon here is an SP3 carbon. This carbon here is an SP3 carbon. Okay, it will not be involved in any kind of resonance. And you notice what they've done here. In order to have these two molecules, they move on as they broke a sigma bond place the sigma bond on this carbon here in order to get this. You cannot do that. You cannot break a sigma bond in order for you to say you have resonance. That is not a resonance structure. So therefore, this here, the answer is no. Okay, how about this one here? B, uh, give me a yes on, 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 or no answer. Do this represent resonance? Oh, no. Something is wrong here. I know why you guys say yes. But what do you think is wrong? Look at this very closely at this molecule here. What is wrong? What is wrong with this molecule? Okay, it has too many electrons on carbon, surrounding carbon. In other words, it is breaking the octet rule by having too more than eight electrons surrounding carbon. Therefore, this cannot be a resonance structure. Okay? So, we say no. How about uh, C? Anybody has an idea? 
does C, these two structures here, do they represent resonance structures? Yes, 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 that is correct. And what did they do? What did they do? All they've done here is to move this pi electron, they move this to to form a pi electron between between this carbon and this carbon. And thereby once they move that, the positive charge is now on this carbon. So all the difference between these two structures is is just the positioning of the pi electron. And therefore these two structures will represent resonance structures. So this is correct. We use a green. Okay? As okay, good. Too many electrons. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so far so good. I think we have uh okay, we have twenty more minutes to go. Okay, so we have to, so we still have plenty of time to do a few more questions. Okay, let us see here. Uh can somebody just pick up the mic if your mic is working and read this question for us? How many additional resonance structures does each of the following molecules or ions have? Okay, thank you. Okay, now how many additional resonance structures does each of the following molecules or ions have? Okay, this is also another good question. Uh, I do want to tell you one thing. Uh, generally, I have, you know what they are, what they want you to do here is to see how many resonance structures you could draw out of this molecule. If you look at this molecule here, we could move electrons around to get resonance structures. But I want to caution you, anytime you want to draw your resonance structures, in as much as possible, you do not want to place more than one charge on any given atom. In other words, what do I mean by that? You could have a carbon atom have a positive charge, but you cannot place two positive charge on a carbon atom or two negative charge on any atom. Because that is even though you might say, well, it could be a resonance structure, because all you've done is to move electrons, but that is a very, very unstable resonance structure. And as such, it will make very little contribution to the resonance hybrid. Now, if you did that to me in an exam, I will give you some partial credit. But if you do that in R, R will not give you partial credit. So, given that, how many resonance structures can we draw here? Okay, let us let us see. Two, two, exactly, two. Somebody said two. So one would be. Let me draw it. Okay. Uh, they want us to do um, additional resonance structure. So we have, if we move, if right now we move this non-body electron, if we move this to here, and in so doing, we break this pi bond. In that case, we now have this here. We now have a double bond between that nitrogen and carbon. So now the positive charge will now be here. Now this one now, this nitrogen now will have the two hydrogen here. Now with the pair of non-body electrons. Because what we, what did we do? We move this pi electron to the nitrogen, and the moment we do that. This carbon is now uh, positively charged, which means that it has a vacant p orbital, and so therefore this non-bonding pair of electrons can move here to form a carbon-carbon, a carbon-nitrogen uh, double bond uh, between the two, uh, this nitrogen and this carbon, thereby forming a pi bond. Okay, some people have a lot of questions. Let us see. I thought it was some formula people were using or no. Let's see here. Is this no question? Two places to move the. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is one structure. This is one resonance structure. 
Now, what is another resonance structure? You guys got it right. You say it is two resonance structures. So which would be the other resonance structure? Let us see. Supposing now we move move the part here. Supposing we move these two here. We move these two here to form a pi bond between this carbon and this nitrogen. Keep in mind, once you do that, this carbon cannot have too many bonds, so you have to move this away. Okay, and that will give us this is one resonance structure, and that will give us this resonance structure. It will now be hydrogen, nitrogen. Now we have a nitrogen carbon double bond. Now this one is still here. This is here. And now this will now be here. Okay, so those are the two. Okay, but by the way, this will be positively charged. Okay, so now these are the two resonance structures that are possible here in this particular molecule. If you agree with that, can you give me a happy face? Okay, very good, good, good. I see a bunch of happy faces. Okay, good. Now, about this one here. Let me erase it so as to make room for Two happy faces. I have that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. About this one here. How many resonance structures, additional resonance structures, can we draw here? Anybody has an idea? How many? You said three. Four. Okay. Keep in mind, I told you earlier, you do not, you do not want to have multiple charge on an atom when you draw resonance. Okay, because those are very, very unstable resonance structures. Yes, the answer is one. So which will be the one? The answer is one. So which will be that one? Let me move this. Let us do this here. Okay, that is the symbol for resonance. What would be that one? What what do we need to do to get that one? Okay. You say one. Is that correct? Where do we get the one? Okay, so supposing we simply move this to here. Wait a minute, let's see here. Okay, if we move, oh, if you look at this, if you look at this, because if you move this to here, pi bond to the carbon, we say pi to the carbon, if you move this to here, this will be negatively charged. You have two charge on that, okay, and then you have two, you know, to think about it, no, the answer here will be no. No, I want to take that back. The answer will be no, because... If any resonance structure we draw here, none. Any resonance structure we draw here, you you are going to have two uh, multiple charge on some atom. For example, if we move this to here, then you are going to have plus two charge on that. plus two charge on nitrogen, and you don't want to do that. Okay? You don't want to do that. So that means that has to be plus two. So we don't want to do that. So therefore, we want to say the answer here is none. Okay? Keep in mind, yes, you could uh, draw resonance structures in which you have multiple charge on an atom, but those, those type of resonance structures are not very stable. 
they do not contribute significantly to the resonance hybrid. So for all in, uh, intent and purpose, we will simply assume uh, those will be none at all at this, for this particular instance here. Okay, so let us move on. Okay, this is a very simple one. Can somebody just pick up the mic and read this for us? Uh, we have 10 more minutes. Uh, we have 10 more minutes to go. Right, right. Alcohol can act as either acid or bases similar to water. In the box below, draw the products of the following reaction. Okay, was well, that uh, Ryan Jackson? I couldn't see your name clearly. Okay, well, thank you, and uh, you. Yeah, thank you for that uh, reading. Oh, okay, that's Matt, uh, Margaret Cotton. Yeah, I was trying to read your name. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, it says alcohol can react as either acid or bases similar to water. In the box below, draw the products of the following reaction. Now, if you are doing this in R, that is why they say in the box below. Okay? Okay, so. What do you think is going to happen here? Okay, they say alcohol can act as acid and bases. Now, let me give you the key. The pair of, the, the pair of non bonding electrons here, non bonding electrons here. You have hydrogen attached to bromine, okay? You have hydrogen attached to bromine. Uh, I would say that this question is fairly, is, is not that fair because you do not know enough about this chemistry of this molecule to actually come up with uh, the credible answer. But the answer they want is this. You have this alcohol here with a pair of non bonding electrons. You have this hydrogen bromide. Hydrogen bromide is a very strong acid. Okay, so what is going to happen, the pair of non bonding electrons will pick up this proton here, and then you get this reaction, you get this product. That is why they were trying to give you a hint that uh, the alcohol could react like water. Okay, so now you get that. One of the pair of non bonding electrons is still here. One of these pair of non bonding electrons is used to attack that proton, and once that happens, there is now a positive charge on this here, on oxygen, and then the bromide is simply just hanging around somewhere here with all of this here. Keep in mind, hydrogen bromide is this here, right here. So when the non bonding pair of electron here, when it comes here to attack this proton here, this hydrogen bromine bond will break, and that pair of electrons will go to the bromine atom. And so that is why the, brom the bromine now has all of the electrons, and the oxygen is now positively charged. So this is the reaction here. And essentially, that is what they wanted to do. Okay. Uh, water, water could also act like like uh, alcohol. That is essentially what they are telling you here. If you have water, water could do the same. Indeed, you're going to find that in many of the reactions that we are going to be studying, water will be acting as as a base. In which case, if you are this here. The non bonding pair of electron on water could attack this proton, pull that proton away from the bromide, and then you have this. So now you have this product here. And this here. Okay, that is what we call hydronium ion. So we are going to see a lot of that. That is what we call hydronium ion.
In any acid uh, solution that contains water, this reaction takes place all the time. You form the hydronium ion, and of course, in this particular instance here, you have the bromide, it's simply just there as a counter ion. Okay? So let me take this out. I simply draw it to show that this here is the same as this, okay? Okay, if, is that clear to you? If it is clear to you, give me a happy face. So this is a case of an acid-base reaction. Let me ask you this. What type of acid-base reaction is this? Is this a Lewis acid-base reaction or is this a Brunsted acid-base reaction? Which one? Brunsted, if it is Brunsted, say B. If, okay, great, great. It is a Brunsted acid-base reaction. Ex excellent, excellent. Okay, folks, before we leave, there is a question I want us to do because I know we have only five more minutes to go. And so, let me see where the question is. So, I'm going to call this the question of the day. Okay? I'm going to call this the question of the day. I uh, hope you guys can read this. It is kind of small for me here. So, let me see if you can read this. Anybody who can read this, can you read this for us if you can? <laughs> Just pick up the mic. <laughs> Which of the compounds above are strong enough acids to react almost completely with a hydroxide ion or with bicarbonate ion? Excellent. Also, thank you. I also see your, your video. Uh, thank you for letting us uh, see your, your video there. I uh, think. Uh, by the way, or any one of you that wants to say hello to us uh, through the video, you are free to do that. Just click on the video, uh, the, uh, uh, the video uh, uh, button, and then we will see your video. I also see somebody is placing a <laughs> some, some uh, smiling faces and uh, sunglasses. Okay, you guys are having too much fun. Okay, the question here is, uh, which of the compounds above are strong enough acid to react almost completely with hydroxide? Hydroxide is this, which is negatively charged, or with bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is this, also negatively charged. Now, this is a very loaded question, and that is why I want us to do, and that is why I want us to do this question. Now, what happens here, in essence, they, what they are asking is, will this here, this acetic acid, will it react with hydroxide ion? They are also asking us, would acetic acid react with the bicarbonate ion? And the same question they want us to answer for this, and the same question they want us to answer for this. Okay, so now in order for you to do that, in essence, what they are saying is you have the hydroxide who react with a proton from somewhere, and that somewhere is one of these molecules here, okay? To form, to form water. The same thing happens, the bicarbonate here, this is the bicarbonate, the bicarbonate ion also reacts with, uh, with a proton, this here is your proton, a proton is the hydrogen atom without uh, electron. So the bicarbonate uh, ion reacts with a proton from any one of these molecules here to form this molecule here. So this question is assuming that you know this. Okay, this is the carbonic acid and this is water. Now they've given us the pKa for water, of course, we know the pKa for water is 15.74, and the pKa for the carbonic acid, 
carbonic acid. The pKa for the carbonic acid, they say it is this here, 6.37. Okay, that is the information they're giving you. Now let us now answer the question. We start with the acetic acid. The question is, will any one of these react with this basis here? Okay? Supposing we take acetic acid. This is a very good question, by the way. This is the kind of question I will give you in an exam or in your quiz. No, you, that's supposed to be a joke. You're supposed to smile, okay? It's not really, it isn't a joke anyway, so, but <laughs> I see a lot of happy faces. Okay, good. Okay. Now, oh, let me, I'm sorry about that. Let me, before we. Okay, so uh, the uh, acetic acid is supposed to react with the hydroxide. Once it does that, hydroxide picks up this proton from the acetic acid. So you have you now form this acetate ion, which is the conjugate base of the acetic acid, plus water. Okay, now we know the pKa for water is 15.74 and the pKa for acetic acid is 4.76. Okay, we know that the acetic acid, this is the acid, and we know that this is the base, the hydroxide is the base. So this is a classic Bronsted acid base reaction. Remember what we told you in class yesterday that the Bronsted acid base reaction goes in the direction of strong acid to weak acid. That is the direction it goes. So the question therefore between acidic acid and water which is the stronger acid? Can somebody tell me which just say uh, yes, acidic acid, exactly. So therefore the question is, will this reaction go yes or no? Will this yes. So this reaction will go. That is the question they are asking you with this question. Now let us do the same thing. It's past nine o'clock. Okay, okay, I see somebody is leaving. Okay, let us uh, let me just uh, do the, uh, the the same rationale you could use for the rest of these other problems. But let me now do the last one. Okay, which one is this here? Let me take this off. Okay, because it's three minutes past nine. I want us to leave here close to nine. Okay, let us do. Okay. Okay, let us do the case of the bicarbonate. Let us do the case of the bicarbonate. So we have the bicarbonate. We have this here. This is what I want to use right here, okay? And then it said it has And the bicarbonate is now here. And when that reaction takes place, this base, this bicarbonate will pull off a proton from here. And now you form this. Okay, it pulls off that one of the protons. So now, we only have one proton here, right? Plus the carbonic acid. Plus the carbonic acid. 
okay, which is this here. Look at the pKa for carbonic acid is 6.37, whereas the pKa for this here is 11.02. So the question I have for you before we leave is, will this reaction go the way it is written, yes or no? No. No, it will not go. So this reaction would not go. Indeed, for this reaction to go, it will go in this direction right here. It will go in this direction because this is the strong acid, relatively strong acid, relative to this, and this is the weaker acid. Okay, so folks, we have finished this session today, but before we leave, let me go ahead and acknowledge those of you who are still with us. Uh, Aja Walton, Alfreda Woods, Area Warren, uh, Deja Brown, Demi Oshundeko, Federal uh, uh, Tiffany, Giovanni uh, Mowat, Lenisha Smith, Glenn Gardney, Alicia McKenzie, Imani Allison, Ines Kifando, Gene Jones, Ajikanda Kepas, Kiani Walker, Kiera Bradley, Makimba Saki, Mata Margaret Cotin, Muhammad Meki, Nadira Mohammed, Ogechi Emegara, Olivia James, Oyin Olusheye, Pravin Cheka, Rahu Shama, Rajid Singh, oh, Rita is also with us. Uh, Rita, by the way, is uh, my graduate assistant. Rita, you are also welcome. Rudolf Brown, Ryan Chita Jackson, uh, Sandra Yekere, Tukisha Wooden, Thomas Obisheson, Thomas Weaver, to the Wilson, I'm Valerie Preville. I want to thank all of you for being here today. I will see you all tomorrow. Do not forget there will be a quiz tomorrow. Uh, by the way, for the, uh, the OWL assignment, uh, for those uh, questions in which they ask you to, do the, uh, to calculate the PKA value, just ignore those type of questions, okay? Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your evening.